name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I don't know if you've heard, but hallelujah, the Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. <laughs> Together we have journeyed through Lent and Holy Week, and now at the tomb, something huge has happened. It's, it's world-shifting. It's life-changing. But there's something that we may have missed there that I want you to notice. If, if something major happens, generally, big news, who typically gets the first word? The people in charge, the important people, the high muckety-mucks. But not in God's realm. He, God seems to turn things upside down. The big news didn't go first to the Roman authorities here or even to the self-serving religious leaders. It didn't even go to the 11 disciples first. The big news was first shared with two women, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. Of course, women were second-class citizens then, and they weren't allowed to join men in many of the religious activities. They were often oppressed or ignored. But they became the first apostles, commissioned and sent by Jesus. So God doesn't go to the powerful, but to the underprivileged and often scorned, the oppressed, the ignored. They are the first to share the good news. So the risen Jesus seems to be doing things differently as usual. And Peter seems to get the message right as well after the resurrection and ascension as we heard in Acts chapter 10. It says, Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles, I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, every people, anybody, anyone who fears God and does what is right is acceptable to God. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel preaching peace by Jesus Christ, that he is the Lord of all. And as we see throughout the book of Acts in the New Testament, this message moves from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria and to the ends of the earth. All nations, all languages, all peoples are welcome in the kingdom of God. Now look back at the story in Matthew 28 that we just heard. We may miss this too. The angel tells Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to go tell Jesus' disciples, and they leave quickly with fear and great joy. I love that emotional mixture. But they run to tell his disciples, his students, his followers, and Jesus suddenly meets them and says, greetings. I love that. <laughs> greetings. Greetings. <laughs> They came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Go tell my brothers. Remember what Jesus usually called the twelve when he was walking the earth? Disciples, children, little flock, he called them. But this time he calls them brothers. And it's important to note that the Greek word translated brothers there could also just as well be translated as brothers and sisters or siblings. The Greek used masculine plural for any group that includes males, even if there were nine women and one man. It's kind of like English used to do. You remember mankind, now we say humankind. And Matthew clearly indicates that women in the larger group of Jesus' followers were, were there, were included. So we are all brothers in the resurrection. We are all sisters and siblings in this resurrection life. We are all part of God's family with our brother, Jesus Christ. And I love the fact that St. Gabriel's is a family of brothers and sisters. And Jesus is our brother. Now think back about the journey of Jesus to this point of resurrection. 
His ministry on earth was launched with supernatural creation of wine at a merry gathering. The very finest wine. He miraculously fashioned it from water. And it was served to these surprised guests at the wedding at Cana. This was the wine of life. The wine of joy. His life ended with wine in a much darker, crueler setting on Good Friday. That cheap, sour wine was forced into his parched mouth by a sponge at the end of a stick. This was the wine of death, of suffering. And we remember Christ's life and his death with the wine of the Eucharist, which we will share in a moment. His blood shed on the cross, remembering him, honoring his deep sacrificial love for us, experiencing his very presence every time we eat and drink the wine. Because he is risen, he is alive, he is with us now. Every time we commune as brothers and sisters and with our brother Jesus, that is the wine of love the wine of everlasting life. Beloved, we, we thirst for this wine of love. We thirst for God's healing, God's loving presence in our lives that are often so pain-wracked. And as we gather at the table and share the bread and wine as family, as brothers and sisters, with our brother Jesus, God willingly gives that love, that healing presence. God gives it abundantly, fully, so that we might share it with others, with everyone, with anyone. Because we are all family. All are welcome into the resurrection life of Jesus Christ. Because the Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.